Hey there. Thanks for tuning in. You ready for another episode of my Bigfoot sighting? All right then. Let's do this. Seen a bunch of run-down new horse towns where the church is the backbone, loves in the bow. And the five-string melodies groove in. With the farmland rows where the roots run deep. Beyond the noise of the busy streets. Where the songs of the south are soothing. When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out. I don't run from banjo music. My Bigfoot sightings happened in Lumpkin County, Georgia. My name is Brooke. I'm 28 years old, and I've lived in Lumpkin County my entire life. I grew up on a 13-acre game farm, like chicken farm. My earliest encounter, I guess, were what I heard sometimes my parents would talk about animals going missing or something happened when I was four or five. I can remember when my dad had roosters on tie cords with barrels and when and any other animal would come in and get one of his chickens, you know, there would be feathers and stuff everywhere. And there was multiple times right when we moved onto this property that the rooster would, would just go missing the tie cord and all. There was no feathers or anything like that left. There's no remnants left that there was even a rooster there besides the barrel. Then there was a few times we went camp out in front of my grandmother's house because my whole family lived on this, this 13 acres and they still do to this day. But it was my uncle, my nana, my other uncle, my aunt, and then us. There was five of us cousins and we used to camp out in front of my nanny's house and we just camp out and stuff, you know, when we were old enough to know things you know it wasn't when we were when we were real young but I think when I was about seven or eight it was during the summertime we camped out there in her front yard and it was all five of us girls and um and we've done this a few times before and nothing ever scared us and we'd stay out there all night but this one particular night we thought that our dads were sneaking up on us we could hear someone walking around the tent coming up because our road was gravel and we were all a year apart, all five of us. And so my cousin was 10. She was the oldest. And then we were all like right there behind her. And we heard someone walking up the gravel road. And so, you know, our giggling stopped and we got real quiet. And my cousin said, listen, I think our dads are trying to scare us. And so we're sitting there, we got real quiet, but it was really hard for us to stay quiet. You know, we we thought everything was funny. We're all laughing and stuff. And she was like, listen, they're, get- it's- he's- they're getting closer. So it-, it, whatever it was, it wasn't one of our parents, but they walked right up to the tent and it scared us so bad. Like we just took out, like it walked up to the back of the tent. And, like we never seen a shadow or anything, but we could just hear it. And we heard something rustle against the back of the tent. And when we heard that, like we all like beelined it out of that tent because we were literally like a foot from the front porch. We weren't far at all from the front porch and we took off running into the house and um, we went in there and told Nana that our dads were trying to scare us and um, my nanny called all of them and they were all at their house so then like our parents thought that one of the neighbors or someone because there's property down below ours thought that they were up there messing with us so they went riding down there to ask them and they weren't even home they were on vacation that week so that was one of the earliest things besides the animals gone missing um but my parents got divorced when I was seven and so I moved I was only there every other weekend and then my dad also married someone else right after that so I didn't actually move back there to that place other than visiting until I was 10 years old and when I was 10 years old they were mobile homes like ours was a single wide but My bedroom was um, at the end of the trailer and those windows are huge windows. Like on the end of it, my bed, my window was so big. I couldn't, in order for me to shut the window, I would have to touch the screen to pull it down. And one night, like right after one of the weekends that we were there, it was in the fall time. We would always open up our windows in the fall because it felt really good outside. And I was in my bedroom playing and I just got this really 
like I got this feeling like something was watching me and it was, it scared me really bad, but it was so dark. There was no light on that side of the house. It was at the other end at our driveway. The back of it was right next to woods. It was probably like five feet from my window to a wood line. And, um, I was sitting there and it just got like, it was so quiet. I think I was coloring. There's, I'm pretty sure I was coloring. But it got so quiet and it was pitch black. But I just got this urgency, like, you need to shut your window. And so I stood up and I thought to myself, I'm going to have to touch this window in order to shut it. And so as I was walking towards the window, something moved outside the window. And it scared me to death. I took off running and and into the other end because my dad's room was all the way on the other end of the house and I went in there screaming I was like there's someone outside my window it just moved outside my window and my dad was like you're gonna have to come out there so my dad immediately jumped up ran outside the front door went around there there's nothing there and this happened so bad that my dad painted my window because even like with my window shut there was no blinds on it so I would feel that all the time because Every other weekend when I'd come over, I would feel like someone was watching me in that window at nighttime and I wouldn't sleep in there. I would either want to sleep in the living room or sleep with my sister or sleep in there with my dad because I was scared. And he eventually painted my window. He painted my window brown where I couldn't see anything out of it. And then a lot of stuff during that time, I don't think anything ever happened until I was 14. Anything else happened until I was 14. Because we moved right after that, we moved again to another county, into a subdivision, and then we moved back. When my dad moved back there, I was probably about 12 or 13. I mean, we were watching TV or something like that. I wasn't outside a lot then. But one weekend, um, when I was 14, this was in 2007, we had family friends come over, and all my cousins were there. So at this point in time, there's like 10 of us, and then plus our family friends, and they had two kids. And my dad, we had went back to this cabin. It, it wasn't on our property, but it was back behind our property. It butted up to our property. And there was this old cabin about a mile back in the woods. And we have went there on the fooler before. And so we were all like, let's go back there and look at it, you know. And we we're trying to scare, you know, we're just pranking our friends like there's someone who used, used to live there or something. So we all walked back there. And me... And Brandon and um, his little sister and my cousin, Chris, he was about five at the time. We were ahead of them and they were all together. It was like my stepmom, our friends, parents, one of my stepmom's friends, and then all the rest of them. So all together, there was like 15 of us that were walking out there. And um, Brandon and I were ahead of his sister and my cousin, but we were ahead of everybody. And uh, like going back to this cabin, there's hills and hollers because our property is also in the middle of a power line. And those like it's it's huge power lines and then steep hills straight down. And so uh, my house was on one power line and then this cabin was two power lines over. So it was pretty treacherous walk. When we came around the corner, we seen the cabin. And as we were walking up to the cabin, I saw something like it was two stories, but it was run, like no one had lived there in years. It was two stories and there was windows, but the sun was shining like, right down on it. And right before the cabin, there was a big goalie. And so my cousin Chris and hit and Brandon's sister, we had to pick them up and throw them to the other side because they were so short, they couldn't make it across. So Brandon jumped across and then I picked up my cousin and slung him across. And then I grabbed Summer and slung her across. And then I turned around and ran and took a big leap because I'm pretty short too. And I jumped across. And so he, Brandon was already up at the cabin and I thought I'd seen something move like out of the corner of my left eye because I was looking at him, but I could see the, I was facing that cabin window and I thought I'd seen something move in there and something didn't sit right. And so there was a rebel flag hanging like, um, the porch was two levels and on the bottom le- level where you would walk into the cabin, there was a rebel flag hanging on a flagpole. Well, the wind was blowing and Brandon stepped up onto the porch and I was right behind him. 
And he was like, I'm going to get this. I'm going to get this flag and take this home with me. And about that time, the wind blew. And when the wind blew, I seen it plain as day. It, at first, my first thought was that it was a homeless person that had long, like three foot black hair. And I looked and and then I seen it like twitch a little bit. And then I realized it was an arm. And um, so when I seen that, I grabbed Brandon by the his hair of his head. I grabbed him from the, from the back of his head and yanked him backwards. And when I did, he said, oh, my God, we got to get out of here. And so we beelined it. And because his sister and my cousin, they hadn't even made it all the way up to the top of the cabin yet. So they didn't see any of it. So we took off running and he grabbed his sister. I grabbed my cousin. We chucked him across the hill and our, like the rest of the gang still had not made it to where we were. They were far behind us. We couldn't even see them. And so, um, my cousin and his sister was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? What's wrong? And he was like, just run, just run back to the house. Just get back to Brooke's house. You got to run. You got to run. So we're running and me and him, you know, we're the same age. So we're about the same pace and we're trying to, uh, his sister and my cousin were, they're crying. They're scared to death. And I went to turn around. He was like, don't look back there. And I was like, what? And he was like, don't look back. And I said, okay, you know, and so we're running. And so we run up, we run smack into, we came around a corner. Like it was like a roller trail around this mountain and we ran smack into the rest of the gang. And I said, we got to go. We got to run back to the house. There's a homeless man following us. And because in my mind, you know, I'd never seen, I've never heard of Bigfoot. You know, I never, no one's ever talked about it. I had no idea what a Bigfoot was. And he, Brandon goes, no, like it's following us. Like we got to go. It's following us. And I was like, it, what do you mean? It, it's a homeless person. And he's like, no, it's right there. He's like, we got to go. So we're running. And then <laughs> some of the kids, like my little, my little sister, my baby sister was three at the time. And she was with us. And then my other sister, she's a year younger than me. But all the younger kids, they were all screaming and crying. And our parent, like his mom and my stepmom and her friend, we they were scared to death. Like they didn't know what to do because they didn't see anything. And so we're running and we finally get to the bottom of uh, because at the creek bed i mean it's i mean it's a power line so from the creek bed all the way up i mean god it was the it was treacherous but i guess our adrenaline was pumping so hard <laughs> we ran up that hill so fast but by the time um uh, well about the middle of it i turned around i turned around and looked back and i seen something move behind a tree and i'm still thinking that this was a homeless person and brandon goes i told you not to look back keep going it's following us so we get up there and we finally make it to the end of our property or to the the top of our property and my dad and brandon's dad and um my uncle heard us screaming and they had come around the house and and met us at the top of the four-wheeler trail right behind the house that we came up that we went down and we were all in such a panic and my stepmom was like don't ask me what happened to them they're the ones that saw the person and I, I, we were so out of breath, I could not get it out. And finally, I was trying to tell my dad. And Brandon goes, this thing was in the cabin and it followed us all the way from that cabin to here. And while my dad did not know we were going there, and so he was pretty upset about that. Um, we weren't really allowed to go back there, but or my stepmom said it was fine. But so my dad, and then I started saying, yeah, the homeless man, I was like, the homeless man followed us. I just seen him down there at the bottom of the hill. He followed us. And so my dad and my uncle jumped on their four wheelers and went riding down there. They, they found nothing. They didn't see where anything had ran through the woods besides us. Cause we made so, I mean, the, we tore up the place, I'm sure. And if it did fall, fall right behind us, like our tracks, we wouldn't have, you wouldn't have seen him anyways. Cause there's so many leaves, but they never seen anything down there. Um, and after that, um, the, my friends, they were supposed to stay another night and they left that night. And, um, I remember before they left, I asked Brandon, I was like, what did you mean by it? 
Like, why did you call that homeless person an it? I mean, was did, was he just gross or something? Like, did he look bad? And he was like, it was not a homeless man. And I was like, what do you mean? You know, like, what do you mean it's not a homeless man? And then um, we ate supper and then they left at night. And he, they were supposed to stay another night. But it, whatever he seen, I think that he may have seen more of it than or you know, than I did because it scared him to death. And he, like, all all the way running back, he was like, don't look back. Don't look back at it. Just keep going. Don't turn around. But, yeah, and we have never even seen them again. Like, I don't know if it was because of that that they were scared and that he told his parents, but his parents didn't tell my, my dad about it. But I've never seen them again. I mean, they're on my Facebook, but I've, I've not seen them again. Um, so that was my first actual sighting. And then, um, around that time too, we would play, we would play hide and go seek a lot all the time in the summertime. Like me and all my cousins and the neighbor's kids, we, I mean, all night long, we would play till sometimes two in the morning, you know, we were always outside doing stuff. And, um, I, there was a few times like me and my other cousin, she, her and I both were like, we're the best at it. And so we would stay hidden. We would find a spot and hide. And we would stay hidden until the whole game was over, like not together, but, you know, separately. And we would only come out if the other kids were crying or pitching a fit because they couldn't win or something like that. Well, one night, me and my cousin, we hid together and we went up the hill on the her dad's property because her, her father passed away when I was seven. She was eight. But we went up there to where her old house was and we were up there hiding in that chicken lot. And um, we heard someone walking up the driveway. I think it was like almost one by this time. And all the little kids, all the other kids, they normally say like right in inside the light. Because we had like one of those big, tall um, pole lights hooked to the, the power there. And they normally say like right inside the light because they were all, they're really scared of the dark. We weren't though. And um, we were sitting there and we got really quiet because we thought that my cousin was coming up the road looking for us. It was his turn to count. And we got to look in. We couldn't see. We couldn't see anything. But we heard someone walking up the road because we were up above my driveway on her dad's property. And we heard someone walking up the road, but we could not see them. And so she was like, let's scare him. She was like, let's let's go back up here and then come down the, the dirt road and then go up down your driveway and let's meet them and scare them. So I was like, okay, because I mean, we could hear you like, you could hear it plain as day walking up our driveway. And other than if you're right in that, that street light, it was completely dark because there was no other lights. And so we could not see nothing. We just heard it. So we got up and we, we snuck up the hill and snuck down the driveway and we come around the curve. And my cousin was like, do you hear him? And I said, yeah. And she said, we're about to scare the crap out of this kid tonight. He's probably going to pee his britches. And so we, we step around, um, cause it's kind of like a steep cut on the, our driveway. And we come around and we jumped around because we heard it like up until we could see because of the way the hill was, unless you jumped out and looked down our driveway, you couldn't see around the hill. And, um, we were walking down and all of a sudden she grabbed my hand and we jumped around and there's nothing there, nothing there. And so we took off running. It scared us. And we took off running because we, we clearly heard something walking up the driveway. We beelined it. I mean, we, I was so out of breath by the time I got home because our, my driveway was pretty long. We ran so fast and all the kids were sitting there. We had this huge rock in my front yard and all the kids were sitting on the rock. Just like my cousin was like, man, we've been done playing for 30 minutes waiting on y'all's butts to get down here. We're ready to go in. And my cousin was like, you didn't just walk up the driveway? He goes, no, I'm tired. We we just had to sit out here to make sure y'all came in. Your daddy said we had to make sure y'all were all down here before we went inside the house. So we've been sitting out here for 30 minutes. And yeah, no one had walked up the driveway. And that scared us pretty bad. I don't think we played hide and go seek for a little while because, you know, like we could just clearly hear something walking, but we could not see it. So that happened. And then... My next actual sighting was in 2016. So, you know, growing up like the rest of my teenage years, right, we were interested in, in boys going to the movies and going and hanging out. So 
once I got 15 and started driving and stuff, like we weren't outside all the time. Like we were like, we were always gone doing things. And then, so in 2016, my husband and I, which is my husband now, um, that was the year we got married, but we moved into, no one had lived there. My parents moved out. My dad and my stepmom moved out. They had been gone from there for a long time. And so we moved in there. No one had lived there. And we were going to um, stay there while we were trying to save up to buy a house. So we lived there in 2016. And in the winter time, and I'm very observant. You know, I, I mean, I grew up with chickens my whole life. Like we have these certain pens that that would be one chicken per pen, but there was no door on it. And so there was wood around the bottom and it was very heavy. Like in order to take the chicken in and out of the pen, you would have to lift up the pen and take the chicken out. And I had two dogs, Griffin, which I still have now. And then my dog, Chevy, who died last year. Chevy, that dog could sniff everything. She was a rat terrier mix. But I noticed, you know, when we first moved in there, Chevy acted weird a lot of the times. I would be in the house by, my, by myself because my husband worked late. And she would growl at the walls and stuff like that. It was really strange. And it, it gave me a heart attack. I would tell my husband when he got home, like, Chevy's growling at the walls tonight. And she did that often. And then sometimes, like, when I would go outside to walk them at night, and I had grown up here my whole life, nothing and ever. I guess I never had a dog that growled at things, you know, or heard things. And um, a few times, we were out in the woods, and she would, her nose would go, or out in the front yard, her nose would go straight up, and her, her hair would stand up on both of my dogs and um she would just start growling it scared me bad so there was a few nights I actually a lot of nights that I would wait until my husband got home before I walked the dogs I didn't care what time it was because I was scared it scared me because I couldn't see what she heard or saw and so one particular night this is the second sighting I seen and up to this point I had noticed because I would walk my dogs down where the chickens were and around to go to the bathroom. And I would notice in the mornings, like the night before, there would be a chicken in the pen. And the next morning, there would not be a chicken in this pen. And I knew that you would have to lift up the pen to take the chicken out. There was no feathers or nothing. And so the, it was like midnight. And it was it was cold. It was in December, either November or December. It was freezing outside. And I was in my coveralls and stuff outside walking the dogs. And my grandfather... His chicken lot was up above our house. And so, I mean, I could throw a rock and hit, you know, on top of the hill where it was. And sometimes he would sit, well, a lot of times he would sit down at the chicken lot in his truck and drink. And so one night, it was, it was midnight, and I was outside walking the dogs. And when I went out of the house off my front porch, I looked up and I thought I saw my papa. And the reason I thought that I seen my papa is because he is a huge man. He's huge. He's got really broad, wide shoulders. I mean, he is a big man. And that's why I thought that this is my grandfather. And so I, I look up there and I said, hey, papa, it's midnight. Like, what are you doing? You know, like I was kind of laughing because I could not believe my papa was out at midnight. And it froze. I thought it was my papa. I thought he just froze. Like he just stopped moving, stopped walking. So the street light was down in our yard and it wasn't pointed up towards there. So it was just like in the shadow that I seen it and it had like, it had stopped in the middle of the shadow. So I, I could see that it was a big man like my papa and I could see him over one of the chicken pins, which I thought was a small chicken pin at the time. And he didn't answer me. <laughs> and I said, Papa are you deaf or something? Like, I'm talking to you. Like, what are you doing out here at midnight? And he never said anything. And I said, <laughs> so I walked a little closer and it like, he didn't move. Like his back was towards me and he did not move. And I said, Papa, hello. Uh, I was just trying to talk to him. He didn't say anything. So right then I turned around and went into the house and I told my husband, I said, Papa, he can't hear nothing lately. I was, he's like, what do you mean? And I said, well, Papa's up there on the hill. And I was talking to him. I was trying to get his attention, like telling him, hey, you know, why were you out here at midnight? And um, he didn't say nothing. And Eric was like, your Papa ain't up there. He, he left him up there at like nine o'clock. 
And I said, well, then somebody's up there stealing his stuff because I just clearly seen someone up there. And so my husband, you know, he grabbed his gun, threw his boots on. I ran right behind him, called my papa and said, hey, I just seen somebody up there at your chicken lot snooping around. I thought it was you. So papa comes down. We didn't see tracks. We didn't find nothing. And if someone had ran off, the dogs would have heard. And the dogs would have heard because we had um, Great Pyrenees. Well, and they're half Marima, a sheep dog. And they're very smart dogs. And nothing could really touch our stuff when they were down at our house because they're very smart. And they smell it or hear them moving. And then, like, it wasn't even until later on that I realized exactly what I saw. And so the next day I went up there. And that, it was like one of the small, like three by five dog kennels. They're, I guess, I guess it's like four or five foot tall, but I seen this thing at least four feet over that dog kennel. And then I realized like thinking back on it, and this was a few years later, I realized what I had seen because it just paused. It just stopped. I guess it was, could not believe that I was out there. And I guess the only thing it thought it could do was just stand in that shadow to where I could not see it, even though I did see it. But yeah, there was no footprints left or nothing. Stuff would still go missing all the time. So I'm going to go back a little ways because I just reminded myself about my dogs. So about the time when we saw the one at the cabin, we had great Pyrenees Marimas. My dad raised them. And at the time we had five of them. It was so crazy because we also had coyotes. We had coyotes bad and they would try to come up and eat the chickens and stuff. Well, there was a few nights in particular, like the dogs, they slept under the trailer. They slept under my bedroom because they could get up underneath the trailer because it was, it was cold. It was in the wintertime. And so they would sleep up underneath my bedroom. And I would know, I heard them, like I would know when there was something out in the yard because they'd go tearing out from underneath my room and keep me up all night. Well, there was many nights. I mean, I can't even tell you the nights where, you know, coyotes are smart. They're very smart. But these coyotes, which I don't, now looking back, like, I don't believe that it was coyotes. I believe that there's a family there that lived there. Because what they would do is, because the dogs were so smart, and our the one dog, Leonidas, he was huge. He, He looked like a lion. He weighed like 150 pounds. He was a huge dog. He was the leader of their pack and there was another male and there's three females and they were all huge. But what would happen was like something would make a noise like down behind the house, like yelp, like a coyote. And then one would do it like up above the house. So what they would try to do is get all of the dogs to go after one of the voices to where something can come on the other side. It was like a distraction, but the dogs were so smart they would split up and they would split up and like nothing went missing out of our yard for like almost three years. I mean, nothing, nothing went missing. And, um, it wasn't until, so Leonidas, at first we thought that someone shot him. He just disappeared one day. Like they all ran off and he never came back home. And then after that, we gave one away or up there, my uncle would take some up to his because he lived above us, like at the beginning of the dirt road almost. And he had chickens too. So my dad was really good with these dogs and he trained them well. So we, we took some up there. So there wasn't as many dogs that guarded my dad's stuff anymore. And then uh, like, it, it was almost as soon as Leonidas went missing, stuff would go missing again. And I know there's one night thinking of the dogs and coyotes. So my baby sister, she, she's a wild little mess. And we used to stand up on the power line and we would call out to the coyotes. And I will never forget this night because it was one of the most strangest things I've ever heard. So she was probably like seven or six. We would make the coyote noises, you know, like the call and they would holler back. Well, my sister made this insane crazy noise like my dad almost told her she was like she was gonna act like that she didn't go in the house because she wasn't even making she was trying to be funny and she was not making coyote noises she was just hollering well the second time she hollered something hollered out exactly i mean it sounded exactly like what she said to a t 
And I looked at my dad. I was like, that is not no coyote. And we all just kind of stood there, you know, but my dad had never said anything to us about Bigfoot or nothing like that. We had no idea. I didn't even know what that was. I think probably when I was in my later teens, I watched Monster Quest about Bigfoot. I think it's what it was called. So this noise came out of the woods and it was exactly to a T, the same noise that my little sister made. And so it, it scared us pretty bad. And my dad just kind of looked around. He was like, let's just go in the house, you know. It scared, like it even scared my dad. He was like, what in the world? And um, so we went in the house. And then a few other things, like just stuff would go missing and stuff like that. Okay, well, before this, so before my husband and I moved back into the house, this was probably in 2015. This is when I have heard them talk. So I had moved out on my own. And then it it didn't work out and I had to come back home. But my grandpa had rented out the trailer. So I couldn't go live in the trailer. And so my uncle, which is up above my nanny papa's beginning of the dirt road almost, he let me live above his garage in his his house he had just built. And so also living there, it was his girlfriend and her two kids. And she had a little girl. She she was um, my cousin Madison. She was about seven or eight, and then her brother was about 16. Um, And at this time, I worked at a restaurant, and it was was a Mexican restaurant, and I would not get home sometimes when I would work a double until like one or two in the morning, especially on the weekends, I would have to clean up and stuff. Well, I had my dogs at this time. I had Geronimo and Chevy, and nothing had ever really scared me at night. Like, I think I lived there for a month or two before I got scared. And so my Jeep, I had a 93 Jeep Grand Cherokee and it was kind of loud. And um, so I rolled up one night and it was one o'clock in the morning. I got out of my car and I just had this like, it was like the same feeling that I had when what it was looking at me through the window or when I couldn't shut the window. And I stepped out of my car. And I just froze with fear. Like this just came over me. Like I was so scared. I'm kind of shaking right now talking about it. But it's scary. I could not. It was pitch black because my Uncle David was like a penny pincher on the power bill. And the floodlights ran up the power bill. So he would not leave any of the lights on for me. And so I could not see a foot in front of my face. It was so dark up there. And I just stepped out of my Jeep. And I just, this just came over me and I just froze. And there was, I could not hear chickens. I couldn't hear nothing. And I was just, I just started praying. (laughs) It scared me so bad because I was so like, it's like this fear just was like, you do not come around here because I would have to, he would lock the front door. So I would have to walk around his big old house and go through the back of the garage because my room was up above it. And it was just like telling me, like, do not come around here. Do not come around here. But I had to get in. Like, I couldn't go anywhere else. So I just started praying. And then all of a sudden, because he had two marimas. He had Chief. He had, well, Chief and Chloe would be at my papa's, like, right down the road. I mean, you could throw a rock and hit my grandpa's house. And, you know, because they used to be my dogs before I moved out. And then my parents moved. So I just yelled really loud. I yelled for chief because I knew, because normally when I would pull up there, my uncle's dogs, he had, he had a few dogs up there, Mara. And, um, I can't remember the other one's names because they died. I can't remember, but we've had so many dogs and girl, Chloe, a girl was her name. I called her Chloe. That was her name, but my papa and everybody else was called a girl, but I yelled chief, which was Leonidas' son. I yelled for him. Like, that's the only thing I thought to do. And when I did, then all the dogs went nuts. They all went nuts. And then I just felt that just le- like just leave. It was like it just like left my body or something. Like, I felt like I could walk around there. I mean, because these dogs, you know, they're like my protectors. So I held on the chief's mane and we just wa- I walked him around to the back and then went in the house or went in the garage and then like ran up to my room and I locked the door behind me. And before I lived there, there was no lock on that door. So I had to buy a lock to put on there. And so this was in the wintertime again. 
it was like early January when this happened or when I first, when this stuff first started happening and it didn't happen before. I didn't notice anything because I wasn't getting home that late at night. And I feel like knowing what I know now, like that's their time. And I know they're just trying to scare me so that I wouldn't see them or know that they're out there. Well, so there was a, a few nights, I had a boyfriend at the time before my husband, and I would stay up all night talking to him, like till like six in the morning, some nights. And I would crack my window open if it got to pop. There was a window facing the driveway and then right behind like where my bed was facing out the backyard. And I got off the phone with my boyfriend at the time that, that night and I heard someone, I heard someone in the backyard talking. I was like, what in the world? Like I could hear the dogs growling and I could hear, hear someone talking. And I, my first thought was because the person who my papa had rented the house I grew up in, the trailer to, they were crazy. And the man was on drugs. Papa had to evict them and stuff. It was terrible. But my first thought was that dang Joe's up here trying to mess with my uncle David's stuff. So I went through the window and I said, hey, you better get out of here. My Uncle David wakes up. Your butt's going to be in trouble. And then the dogs like went nuts. The dogs went barking again. You know, I woke the whole house up. And I told my Uncle David, I was like, there's somebody. I'm pretty sure Joe was out here in your backyard. And so a few days went by. Well, there was two nights in particular. I heard someone. So the door that comes through the garage that I would use to come in the house. We didn't lock it because that's how I got in and out. Well, one night I had just come in and it was like after the first time I was like almost paralyzed, couldn't move and I was scared to death. Every night, like when I would come up the driveway, I would call the dogs. I would, when I would first pull them off the driveway, I would call Chief up from my pop's house and have him out when I would get out to go into the house. And there was still many nights, like I was, like I was scared like many nights. I was scared after that. That one time ruined me. And then, but every other time I would feel like there was something watching me. Well, one night it was like one in the morning. I had just got home and went up the stairs. And as soon as, um, as soon as I would get home, I would let my dogs out. And so I come back down the stairs, flip the light on, let my dog out, both of them. And then I'd bring him in and then walk back up. Well, when I wouldn't, <laughs> this is funny, but I was so scared that I would like, because it was like a bunch of stairs. You had to walk up to the top above the garage and the lights, the light switch for the garage lights my uncle would kill me if I left them on. So I would run into my bedroom and then <laughs> open the door really quick and shut the lights off like really fast and then run back up and lock my door and run back upstairs because I was scared. And, um, so one night, like right after I did that, this was probably like 15 minutes after this happened, after I had done that, I heard the door open, something opened the door, come around and twisted my doorknob three times. And <laughs> this scared me to death. I just started praying. I literally started praying and I didn't know what else to do. It scared me so bad. I told my uncle about it. He was like, ah. You're just hearing things, you know, like there ain't nothing out here going to mess with you. They know I'd shoot them. I said, well, you sleep through everything. How are you going to shoot somebody when you're asleep? You know, I didn't have a gun or anything like that. I was scared to death. There's a few nights that I didn't cut. Like right after that, there's a few nights I stayed at my boyfriend's house because I was scared because they tried to come in my room. And so my cousin, he was 16 and he played, he would play Xbox like all night long. Well, one night, okay, this is during the time my uncle had left and went on vacation for a week. He went to Oklahoma and he took the key to like his lawnmower and stuff and younger, like juvenile, big clip. They're trying to be funny. And a lot of stuff happened there in this week because my uncle David was not there. So the first night I had just come in this time. It was almost two because it was like a, it was like. Thirsty Thursday or something is what the restaurant called it. And all the college kids would come and some of them wouldn't be there till one in the morning and then we would have to clean. So it was almost two when I got home and I knew my uncle David was at home. And I told my cousin Tristan, I had told him what had been going on. 
And he was normally is up. And so he was like, well, text you when you're about to be home and I'll make sure I'll come downstairs. And so you can come in the house. Like I'll meet you at the garage door. And I said, okay, because I was scared to death. So especially without my uncle there. And so I come in the house. I'm, I met Tristan out of the garage and I went upstairs and he went back to his room. Well, <laughs> no sooner than I got upstairs, changed my clothes. There was a lawnmower, like, because it was two, it was like the second story. My room was up above the garage. And like directly below my back window was my Uncle David's zero turn. And that thing, my uncle had took the belt. He left the keys in it, but he took the something off of it. So you could crank it, but you couldn't take it anywhere. So it just like crunk up. Like out of nowhere. And I was just like, what in the world? And I, as soon as that happened, because my window was open, it was starting to get a little bit warm. And so I beelined out of my bedroom, ran in the house. My aunt, she had done woke up. And I was like, I've I've told y'all there's somebody out here messing around. And at this time, I still did not think that it, I still had not heard anything about a Bigfoot or anything. I had no clue that that's what that was. And so we just, we flipped all the lights on. So we, all the kids come running downstairs. I think my cousin had a few friends over and we just started flipping on all the floodlights and it was still running, but there was nothing. There was, there was nothing out there. And the dogs were just like, they didn't move. So if it was somebody, like if it was the the neighbor down there, they did not like him. They would have attacked him if he would have come to the yard. So we were just like, what in the world? So my aunt called my uncle and told him what happened. And so immediately, like we thought it was a neighbor down there trying to come up to the house and steal stuff. But David had took something off. So I told him, I was like, I told you there was something out here. Well, after that happened, I think I had taken a week off or something. I can't remember. But one night I was laying in my bed and I heard something outside. I heard someone talking again because I had my window open. Well, I called my cousin and I said, hey, there's someone outside talking and no one believes me. And my uncle was back home at this time. I was like, I want you to come. So we were, we met. (laughs) So my door was like about a foot or two from the door that actually went into the house. So I said, on the count of three, we're going to open our doors and see each other. And then you're going to come in here and I'm going to let you hear this out here. So we did that. <laughs> so looking back now, it was so funny. We, oh, we slung our doors open and we could see each other. And, but we were both scared to death. And so I was like, come here. I was like, there's someone outside talking and we were whispering. So we crept up my stairs and I was trying to keep my dogs quiet. And we both knelt down at my window and Tristan was like, I hear it. Well, we could not see who was talking. And there was like, there was like a building out there and like, but we could hear it. It was like just in the wood line where all the shadows were. And like the moon was full this night, but we could not see who was talking, but it didn't sound like, like a, like a human talking. Like it, it was talking, but we couldn't understand what they were saying. And it was more than one voice. And like, we were like scared. I think he was holding my, we were holding hands. Like we were scared to death. And, um, we were just looking and watching and well, girl or the dog girl, I, they clear, they clearly said girl, they were calling the dogs. They were talking to the dogs. Okay. And I was just like, what the heck? And it was a male, it was a male voice, but all we could understand it saying was girl. It kept was like I can't even can't even describe it but we we could hear we clearly hear heard it say girl but everything else was like gibberish or something we couldn't understand what else it was saying and my cousin was like that dang Joe down there he's on he's geeking out or something and he can't even talk and I was like shut up like shut up just listen and we we were looking but we like it she was looking around this building we could not see what she was looking at well all of a sudden I heard something from the left because down like on the left side of the house were, were, was a chicken house and there was all kinds of hens in there and other roosters, but all the nesting boxes 
where my uncle would hatch out baby chicks and stuff was down in that chicken house, like like 30 feet from on the off the left side of the house. Well, I heard something. We and I was like, listen, listen. And we were listening. And he was like, oh my God, I can still hear the they're just trying to distract the dogs. So we were like, oh my God. And we, but my uncle, he's a hard sleeper and you did not wake him up because he had to get up early for work and he would he would have killed us if there wouldn't have been something. So we crept down my stairs, crept out my door, went into the house. We woke up his mom and we we're like, listen, there's someone in the backyard. And so from the windows down in the living room, we could see girl and chief and Mara, all three of them were there now. And something was talking to the dogs, but the, the way the shadow was, we could not see what was talking to them. It was in the shadows. And I'm like, look, I was, I was, we were telling my aunt, like, look, like, we're not crazy. Like we've been hearing someone out here talking to these dogs. They're trying to distract them. Well, there's windows everywhere. So we heard something again down in the barn and the dogs, they would look at the barn and then it would say girl's name again. So then they would look back at it. And so I was like, let's go look out the dining room because all the sheets were open or the plastic was up because it's starting to get warm. And so you could see her right down into the, the chicken house. So we're standing there and there's a radio and my uncle left the radio on all the time because where he would take the chickens to shows, like it would be really loud and he wanted the, the chickens used to loud noise. And the blue light from the power button, it was very, it was like one of those old, like big radios and it was very bright and you could see, well, my aunt is who's seen it first. She said something is moving down there in the chicken house. And we were all like, oh my God. And it was like something was crawling around on the ground, getting in those nesting boxes where there's eggs. And she was like, I'm going to go wake up David. So she went in there and she woke him up and we're like, look, there's someone out here. He was like, ah, and she was like, shut up and come here and look. We showed him the dogs. The dogs were still around that barn, you know, looking around that building. But the, all of their hair was up, their tails were straight out, their ears were straight up, and they were growling. Like, you could hear Chief growling. And so we walked in my uncle over there to the dining room, and he seen something moving around. And we're like, we, we told you, like, we told you. And so he said, this is what I'm going to do. He said, he went in there and got his shotgun. And he said, I'm going to walk out right here, out the front door. And y'all stay right here. And he told us to open up the dining room window. And they're very quiet windows, so you couldn't hear them opening. And um, he said, I'm going to give this these people to the count of three to show themselves, or I'm going to threaten to shoot them. So he told us he got around. He went off the porch and got around there. And, I mean, he was right in front of the dining room window. And he said, are the dogs still looking around that building? And it was still moving down there, like crawling around. We could still see it moving as he walked outside. He said, when I count to three, when I tell y'all to, y'all flip on all the floodlights. I mean, they're they like high dollar floodlights. And you could see everything with these floodlights. And so my uncle, he yells, I'm going to give you to the count of three. Get off my property and show y'all selves, because if you don't, I'm going to blow a hole through you. Well, as soon as he spoke, the dogs started raising cane, and they beelined it around the house to where he was. And whatever was down there moving in the chicken house just froze. And he said, I'm going to count to three, and I want y'all to flip the lights on. So, and so he's like, one. And he did it out loud. He was like, one, two. And he like cocked it. And when he did, we seen, and he, he we seen that thing jump up and start running. It was all the way like, it, it had a little ways to go out the chicken house. It wasn't like at the front of it. He was like, flip the lights on. So we flipped the lights on. And then it ran so fast that by the time he said three and flipped the lights on for it to start running, it, we didn't catch it. 
we didn't see it after that. And there was no, like, on the, that side of the chicken house was woods. Like, it was a little ways to the woods, but it was pitch dark. Even with the floodlights, like, you couldn't see past the chicken house. And the dogs, like, it it outran the dogs. It outran, I mean, the light. And <laughs> it's scared. <laughs> His mom, Uncle David, was like, oh, my gosh. And so he's like, there is no way that somebody ran that fast to get out of the light. And so he went down. He went, and then I went with him. We were running down there and we didn't, there's no footprints. There was nothing, nothing. And after the, a few days after that, for a few weeks, nothing really happened. I think, I think they really thought my uncle was going to shoot him, which he probably wouldn't have, but nothing really happened after that. But I can clear, I can still hear that to this day, like hear that, hear him saying girl. Like I could hear the, the talking, like the gibberish and them saying girl. And well, I know like the day after that, we had went down there to see if what's his name was down there. Cause at first my uncle thought it was him and, but he wasn't even there. He was, he wasn't there that day or that night. His wife said that he had been gone for a few days. And so a few weeks after that, I moved out and, um, that was the, one of the last thing that's ever happened on the dirt road where I lived and grew up. My family still lives there. But so my husband and I bought our house in 2018 and it's on the outskirts of Blumpkin County and we have a pond and like almost seven acres. And I was pregnant when we first moved in here and we had lived here. We bought it in September and we, this was like April and I was due at the beginning of May. So I was huge and um, we had, we had three dogs at this time. We still had my dog Chevy and then my dog Griffin, which I still have now. And then um, we had a German Jag Terrier, which is a hunting dog named Pistol. And when we first moved in here, my husband would tell me bears smell terrible. Like they, if there's a bear out here, it smells terrible. Well, I was walking the dogs. And when we first moved here, I had to walk Griffin and Pistol on a leash because they'd run off. And, you know, we were new to the place and I didn't want someone to kill them or them get ran over. And um, we walked out. And I could smell something. It was the most awful smell I've ever smelled in my life. And so where our house is, like our house butts up to like a hundred acres that no one lives on. And then like across the road from us, there's people who live up there, but it's really, there's hardly no one that lives here and it's very quiet and it's out in the middle of nowhere. Like it takes us almost 20 minutes just to get to town. And, um, I went running in the house and I said, Eric, there's a bear out here. He's like, what do you mean there's a bear out here? I said, it smells terrible. Like there's something out here that stinks. It would like knock you down. He was like, so he came outside and he said, yeah, I smell it. Well, he went to shining lights and we heard something walking off down into the woods. And to this day, like he, my husband is such a mess. He will swear that he did not. But he said, dang, that sounds like somebody walking. That sounds like someone walking on two feet. And I said, I know. And, but now he says he don't, he didn't say that, but he did say that. And it, but it was walking off and there was two different sets walking off from, from us. And at this time I worked at a veterinary hospital and I would have to be there at six 30 and it would take me 45 minutes to get there. So I was like up and getting ready at, at five in the morning. If not earlier, I think it was like four 30 when I would get up. Well, it was, I was running a little late this morning and I think it was five 45. Um, I think this is like the third week we had lived there and they like, we have a gravel road. It, it goes like all the way around our property and then it, it cuts down behind our big back porch because we have two, two big porches and, um, somebody was staying at our house. And so there was two other cars and our friend, his truck was jacked up and it was parked like right next to the porch. And the porch was a lot higher than the truck. It's a huge porch. And um, I'm putting out uh, what I would do was I would let the dogs out, walk the dogs for a second, come in, grab my lunchbox and stuff and load it on the passenger side and then walk around to the driver's side. So I did that that morning. And I, as I was putting my stuff in the passenger seat, like our gravel, it's not fresh gravel. So in order for you to kick up gravel, you would have to be really heavy. And I'm staying in there and I heard, I heard someone walking 
and they were kicking up gravel as they were walking. And it scared me so bad. My big pregnant butt. Well, I wasn't that big yet. This was in um, October. I jumped in the passenger seat. It scared me so bad. I slammed my door and locked all the doors. And then I climbed over the middle of my car to get in the driver's seat. And I told Eric, I, I told him on um, my lunch break, I said, something was walking around the house this morning and it scared me to death. And he was like, no, it was probably just some kind of little raccoon or something. And I was like, no, our gravel is packed down. You can't just kick gravel on our driveway. Like force has to be made to move the gravel. So that happened. And then in December, like my husband got a smoker and we (laughs) we were learning how to smoke meat and stuff. So we would be out on our big back porch like until three or four in the morning. And two, with me being pregnant, like I would get up like all throughout the night and go sit on the back porch. Well, this one particular night, um, I think it was like Christmas Eve, like we were smoking something. It was three in the morning and my husband had come in to go to the bathroom and I was still sitting out there by myself and I sing, you know, and I sing all the time and I was just sitting out there on the porch and I was singing. Like, I think I was singing like a Christmas carol or something. And I heard like this loud whistle, like from down because we have we have a big pond and we have like two creeks, like a creek comes down and meets the big creek. And it was like down towards the creek, but it was like probably like 50 foot from the porch, like this loud whistle. And it scared me to death. I about peed my pants. And so I ran into the house. I was like, Eric, someone's out here. They just whistled at me. And he was like, what? He was like, I think your pregnant brain is getting to you. Like there ain't nobody out here. It's three in the morning. And I said, yes, there is. They just whistled at me. And so that's happened a few times since then. And then there's a few nights because then I really started listening to like big foot podcasts and stuff. And um, I told my husband, I would tell him about all the stuff that I'd seen and all this. And he just would think I was crazy. Well, one day we were standing out there and we, I swear to you, and he heard it too. I know he did, but he denies it. We heard wood knocking like in the field across the creek from our house. And um, he will say he did not, but yes, we did. Because he said something to me first. Because the first time I heard it, I didn't say anything about it. Then it happened again. He was like, oh my God, do you hear that? I said, I told you they were here. I told you they were the big boy here. And um, he was like, I don't know what that is. I've never heard that before, but it was wood knocking. And he tried to act. And then now he acts like he didn't hear it. But so my, this next, encounter is when I heard them talking here at our house now and so this was in April and a few things have happened like none of our animals have went missing or anything but we've heard like bipedal footsteps like walk off into the woods well somebody had been coming here and one day we happened to be home and this fooler comes flying up and then seeing we're home they turned around and my husband went and met him was like hey man this is private property and he said he was coming to fish well you know, my husband was like, I don't care if you come and fish, but please let us know, like, come knock on the door and say, hey, can I fish? You know, because it's kind of rude to just show up on someone's property and fish their pond without even knowing them and ask them if you can fish. And so this was like the week after that happened. This was in April and I was big pregnant. Like I could, I, when I walked, I was like waddling. It's how big I was. And so it was, it had just broke daylight and I had let the dogs out. And I'm standing on the porch, you know, because I didn't really like walking far from the house because who knows if I was going to labor or something like walking. Well, I heard someone talking on the back side of the pond. And my first thought was, I cannot believe these jokers have done come here and try to fish our pond without asking us. So I waddle my big self off the porch and I'm like taking off and I, I get to the dam and the dogs, my dog Pistol, her ears are like straight up. And I can still hear them talking. But I can't understand. It's like gibberish. Like you, I could not understand what they were saying. But it was two voices. And they're very deep and guttural. But it was like gibber jabber. Like I couldn't understand what they were saying. And so I walk out. I get about to the middle of the dam. And this noise lets out. I mean, I have never heard nothing. And it, it was so loud. I'm pretty sure that I did pee my pants. And that's terrible to say, and it's kind of embarrassing, but it scared me to death. Like it was the loudest noise I've ever heard in my entire life. And then as soon as that happened, 
the same exact noise come from back behind our house. And I about killed myself trying to get up into the house. I done peed myself. It scared me so bad. My dogs, like my dog was ahead of me and they, they beat me to the house. It scared them so bad. And, um, I had peed myself. I was come running and it's funny now, but I was running into the house and my husband, I said, Eric, there's something out here. And he was like, what do you mean? I couldn't even hardly breathe. I was stuck trying to explain to him and he went running out of the house with his gun and stuff and no tracks, no nothing. And, um, after that, like I, it scared me so bad. And then knowing I'm going to have, you know, our little girl, I just started, I pray over our house every night because who knows? Like I've heard so many stories about them taking children and stuff like that. And I just pray over our house every night. And, um, there's only been a few things happened since then. And it was another time. It was like, um, early, early in the morning. And so my dad and my stepmom, they live with us for a little while for about two weeks before they moved into their new house. This was back in February of this year, 2021. And, you know, I told them like, you know, cause after researching and listening to people's stories, you know, I understood that they are here, you know, I would pray for our animals and thank God, like they've ne- they've not touched their animals or nothing, but I know that the nighttime is their time. So we try not to be out there. And even though my husband doesn't believe in them, he still doesn't go out like in the middle of the night. Because I told him, like, that's their time. Like, if they're here and they're still here, like, that's their time to do things. Like, and we'll, we would be on their time messing with them. So I told my stepmom and her mother, because they would go out all hour, hours of the night and smoke cigarettes out on our porch. And I knew that they did that. And the first night they were here, I said, listen, I was like, I don't care if you don't believe or whatever. I said, I'm just going to tell you. <laughs> Sometimes strange things happen here. You know, I've told my family about things I've heard and seen and they all think I'm crazy. But I told my stepmom, I was like, listen, if you hear so, I was like, don't go far from the house. Like if you want to go out there and walk around, that's fine. I was like, but I would not go off the porch for one, because I mean, they know who lives here <laughs> Two, It's their time. And when I told her this, like her eyes got really big and she was looking at me like I was a freaking idiot. And I was like, listen, like, I don't care if you don't believe me. I'm just warning you. Like, if you go out at three o'clock in the morning and you hear something, like, I'm just, I'm just warning you. Like, you may hear something. I was like, we don't go out at night or out, you know, that long at night, that early in the morning. It was literally the second day they were here. The next morning I got up and my stepmom was like, I heard something last night. And I was like, what? She was like, I was out on the front porch smoking and it was like almost four in the morning and I heard something like let out this really loud noise like across because she had stepped off the porch and she was like, I guess, I don't know, talking to the, I had some kittens that I was training to stay out in the yard and I hadn't got them fixed yet. So I kept them in a a kennel, a dog kennel um, with chicken wire around the bottom to where they couldn't get out until I, they were old enough for me to get them spayed and neutered. And she had stepped off the porch and she had started talking to these kittens and petting the kittens. And that's when she heard it. And it scared her to death. She said, she, she about Peter Vance come running in the house. And I said, well, I told you, I told you, you would probably hear something. And I mean, now they don't think I'm crazy, but Eric was like, oh, you didn't hear nothing, you know? So I had another experience in Lumpkin County that wasn't on the property that I grew up in or at my house. Now I was hunting. This was in 2014, early 2015. I was hunting with one of my, with a boyfriend and we were over off of um, highway 52 and it's very remote over there. And we were hunting and this is the first time I'd ever went hunting with him. And I had been hunting, you know, all my life, you know, done all kinds of stuff, but we were down in a, it was like a made like a deer blind, but it was made out of wood and there were two chairs in there and we were right on the edge of a creek and it took us about 25 minutes to walk back in there because we had to park the truck and he didn't have a foiler at the time. So we had to park the truck and walk down in there. And so it took us forever to walk down there, but we finally got there and we were sitting in there and I think we got there about like two thirty, 
and we were going to stay there until dark. Well, we had been sitting there for probably, I think it was about 4.30, so about two and a half hours, two hours. And I started smelling like this terrible smell. And I looked at him and I said, did you crap your pants or something? What is that smell? And he was like, no, did you? I said, no. And where we were, there should have been deer everywhere. On that road, there's deer that could pass through there. I mean, people hit them all the time. And so like where we were was a really good spot. And so we had like the whole two and a half hours we'd sat there. We had not heard a squirrel. We had not heard anything. Birds, nothing. And, but which was really odd to me because I'd been hunting a few times and, um, I mean, you hear all kinds of stuff. We didn't, we hadn't heard nothing. And so the smell came up and I was thinking in my mind, I was like, how in the world did something get that close to us that smelled that bad without us seeing it? And so I was trying to be really quiet because I'm kind of talkative and I was trying not to talk, but I was, I honestly was getting bored. And I was telling him, I was like, how did something get that close to us without us seeing it? And see, right across the creek, the creek was about 15 foot wide. And right across the creek was a thicket, like a briar thicket. And there were still some pines over there that were still green. And But the briar thicket was so dense, like you couldn't see through it. So like, I mean, you could see over the top of it, but you couldn't see through it for nothing. And we were both sitting there talking and he's like, you know, I hadn't heard nothing. He's like, normally you hear squirrels and stuff. And we haven't even heard. Have you heard anything? And I said, obviously not. So we're sitting there and the smell, I mean, it was just overwhelming. Like it was, I almost got sick. It was so bad. And he was like, you know, bears, you know, they smell really bad. And I said, well, I've been around bears. I don't ever smell like that bad. I was like, but two, where is it at? Like if it's a bear. Where is it? Why can't we see it? Why didn't we hear it walk up? Because, I mean, they're stealthy, but they're not that stealthy to where we're, especially with nothing in the woods making a noise. There's no way a bear got that close to us without us hearing it. And so now I'm kind of freaking out and I think he is due, but he's not saying anything. You know, he's trying to be like all macho and, you know, try not to be scared because he's, he doesn't want to make me think that he's a sissy or something. And so it's starting to get dark and I said, I really got to go to the bathroom. I was like, I got I to gotta pee. I was like, I'm ready to go. And I was like, are you ready to go? He's like, yeah, I've been ready to go. I just didn't know if you were yet or not. And so I was like, yeah, I'm ready to go. So now it's like dark. Like it's, as we're coming out and like in North Georgia with these back of mountains, like if you're in the middle of the woods, when it gets dark at nighttime, like in the middle of the woods, I mean, it is dark. You can't see nothing. So we got out of the blind, but we're still being quiet because he's like, listen, we may see one walking out of here. So it'll take us about 25, 30 minutes to get even to the truck. So he's like, just be real quiet. And so he was in front of me and he had the gun and I was carrying the backpack. It was a rifle. And um, <laughs> it's so funny because I don't even think he'd been hunting that much because I don't even know. You know what I mean? I don't even know if he really knew what he was doing, but he was just trying to impress me. and. <laughs> It wasn't a high powered rifle or nothing. It was just like, I don't, I think it was a 22 or something or like a, a 17, which I know a lot more about guns now, but I can't remember what it was. I just know it was not high powered. So whatever this was, they wouldn't have done nothing to it in the first place. So we get out and we're walking and we have to walk down the creek. And so you can hear the creek, you know, you can hear it moving, the water moving and we're walking up and then we have to cut up to the left to get to the road like the old it's an old logging trail and so as soon as we step onto this old logging trail like i mean it it just fell dark so fast i mean you couldn't even see your hand in front of your face and he had a flashlight and i had a flashlight too so i was like listen sometimes you can see better at night without the lights on and you can like you can see like if your eyes adjust you can see without a flashlight so i was like let's just not turn them on yet until we need them and so we're walking up and he's got the gun, like I said, and I, I have the backpack. He has one of my hands, you know, to where we can stay together. And we're walking. And to the right of me, I heard a twig snap. And out of nowhere. And still, like, there's nothing making a noise. Nothing. And then I heard a twig snap. 
And I grabbed him. I said, did you hear that? He was like, yes, just keep walking. He's like, it's probably just a deer or something. So as we were walking, and this was so terrifying to me, this is probably one of my most terrifying encounters because, I mean, if it wanted us, it could have got us that night. Like, I mean, clearly, I mean, we both could have been dead. And so we're walking out and every probably 10 yards we'd walk, it was snapping a twig. And it wasn't just like, you know, you step, you know, like you're walking and you step on a twig, like a tiny twig. It makes, you know, a little snap. But no, this was like snapping, like he was snapping branches and it was getting louder. And so we come up the road and he like, he stops and he's like, he turned, it was like kind of like a spotlight, kind of like a handheld one. And he starts circling around, just like shining this light. And he was trying not to seem scared, but he knew that I was scared. And I know he was scared. Like we were both scared out of our minds. And he's shining everywhere. And we caught like eye shine. And it was probably like eight feet off the ground. And I was like, holy crap. I was like, did you see the eye shine? He was like, yeah, it's probably just a raccoon in a tree. I was like, that ain't no raccoon. I said, I've seen raccoons like in trees. That was no raccoon. And he said, <laughs> he handed me the gun. And because <laughs> he said I was a better shot than him. I'm sorry. It was funny now, but it was so, it was so terrifying. He handed me the gun and he took the backpack. He said, listen, he's like, we're going to get up this hill right here. And we're going to try to act, not act scared, but I know you're scared. I'm scared too. And he said, but we're not going to act like we're scared. We're just going to just beeline it up this hill. And, but we're not going to run because whatever's out there that's following us, it was paralleling us through the woods. And he thought it was a bear. He said, whatever's paralleling us, I don't know if they've ate tonight, but I ain't going to be their dinner. So I want you to go in front of me and I'm going to be behind you shining. I'm going to walk. And it was like, this humongous hill like I was dreading like I remember walking in dreading that I was gonna have to walk up that hill like to get back to the truck and the hill wasn't even we were still probably 10 minutes from the truck walking and his buddy had came too but he also parked up there with us and he went like on the opposite ridge from us so I mean if something would have happened to us he would not have heard anything I mean he may have heard the gunshot but not a screaming or something so I honestly, I started praying. Like I seriously did. I started praying in my mind and we're walking up and you could, I mean, now it's like, it's probably like 10 foot from us, like snapping twigs. And now we could hear it walking. At first we could only hear the twig snapping and then we could hear it walking and it was bipedal. Like it was someone walking beside us, like 10 foot in the tree line. And I, almost, I, was on the verge of crying. I was so scared. And I remember him saying, listen, <laughs> I know we're just dating, but you're an awesome girl. And if something happens to me, please just tell my parents that I love them. And I was like, what? You're scared. Like he scared me more than almost in that. Cause I was like, Oh my God. I was like, you ain't going nowhere. You ain't leaving me out here by myself. And so I, I remember he was sweating so bad that I couldn't hardly hold his hand because his hands were sweating so bad he was so scared and I just started praying and then I started praying out loud like I just started calling on the name of Jesus and I know I don't do that you know around people but I was so scared and that's all I knew to do so I started calling on the name of Jesus like out loud and then I started like yelling it like I just started yelling in the name of Jesus and finally I seen we seen the truck and as soon as we seen the truck we just took off running because up until we seen the truck, we were walking because we didn't want it to think that we were scared, even though it knew we were scared. It was scaring the crap out of us on purpose. So we 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 took off running as soon as we we seen the truck. He slung his gun, everything, the backpack in the back of the open truck. He slung the doors open. I got into the back. He got up there because he had something in the front seat, and then he jumped into the front seat. And then he starts trying to call his friend. He was like, and he answered. He was like, man, where are you? He was like, I'm almost to the truck. He's like, I just saw y'all get in. And he was like, dude, you need to run. Like you need to get in your truck right now. And so he jumped in his truck and he was like, what's wrong? What's wrong? He was like, nothing, but I'm backing up 
you better get in your truck and hurry because we're, we're getting out of here. And we did like, <laughs> it was so muddy too. And his tires weren't even like mud tires. We were sliding everywhere. I thought we were going to get stuck, but I was so scared. That was one of the most terrifying walks of my entire life. It was so scary. <laughs> I'm like trembling trying to hold my phone. It was so scary. I mean, it's, I mean, it's kind of funny looking back now, you know, but I know that God was with us because if that thing wanted us, it could have took us. No one would have heard. I mean, th- there would have been nothing. Like if it wanted us that day, it, I believe it was just trying to scare us off. But I remember like looking back now, we sh- like I should have known because if I had known what I knew now, I would know right away that I mean, when there's deer and stuff, but there was no deer, like nothing was coming through there. There was no rodents, nothing. We didn't hear anything. But yeah, that was in my town. And then I will say too, looking back. So where I grew up, the land that my, uh, my grandpa bought in 13 acres, they used to call that the briar patch. And some of people that my dad knew that lived in that town, they told us that back in the late seventies, that they used to hunt that and it's called the briar patch. And that one night, this man, one of my dad's friends, he took his wife back in there and the same creek where we had went back to the cabin where we had to cross the creek. So they were back in behind that same cabin and they heard something flipping rocks in the creek. And so he was like, what the heck is that? So they climbed out of the deer stand and as they walk up to the creek, they see this thing, which he told me, he said, I seen this thing that looked just like a, he was like, it was red, like an ape. And he said it was bent over in the creek, flipping rocks. And his wife, which to this day has never been back in the woods, said, oh my God, what the blank is that? And when she said that, that thing jumped up. He said it was probably about six feet tall and it was breaking like three inch saplings trying to get up out of the creek bank running from them. And his wife is still to this day. He's never been hunting back there again. And she's never gone back into the woods. So I thought that was kind of crazy and cool too. So I know I'm not crazy. And then another guy who lives right down the road from us, well, not from us, but from the area where I grew up. And I talked to him to this day. He saw he had chicken houses, but where he's building his new house on this land. And this was, this was a year and a half ago. He was walking in one of the chicken houses. I guess he was storing like his lumber in there to build his house. And um, he looked out the window of the chicken house and he said, plain as day, there was a white one with not a lot of hair. He said it did not have a lot of hair. But its hair was white. And he was sitting on the ground with his back propped up to an oak tree. And he said he his mouth flung open. He was like he could not believe what he was looking at. So he, but he was still walking. But he wasn't walking where he was walking and he tripped and like knocked over some stuff. And he said that thing, he calls him a thing, but he said that thing jumped up. And took off running. He said that thing ran so fast. I mean, it it was insane how fast it ran. And that was like a, a mile down the road from where I grew up. Well, that's it for tonight's show. If you've had a Bigfoot sighting and would like to be a guest, please go to mybigfootsighting.com and let us know. Thanks for listening. Have a great night. Seen a bunch of run down no horse towns Where the church is the backbone, loves and the plow And the five-string melodies grooving With the farmland rows where the roots run deep Beyond the noise of the busy streets Where the songs of the south are soothing When I hear the front porch picking down home rhythm ringing out I don't run from banjo music Yeah